have some time. Listen up. We're going to have some time uh, to break up into some groups. And we're going to basically, event, at the end of the night, we're going to split up into all of our guys in one section, all of our girls in one section. Uh, and we're just going to ask you a couple real simple questions. Nothing, nothing crazy. It's not a test. Uh, so you don't get a pass-fail or anything like that. We just want to get to know you better. Uh, there's a lot of you in the room who are new. Uh, we have a lot of new faces. And, and some of you, you don't know anybody else on the other side of the aisle from you. And you, they don't know anybody on the other side of the aisle from them. And so we want to get some time to just get to know one, one another, uh, to just hear, uh, hear a little bit more about e- each other and, and maybe some things that are going on in, in our lives that we can just pray about. Um, because one of the things here in, in this place, we want to be a family. And, and how many of you guys know families, families sometimes is messy, right? Sometimes your family's a little messy. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you get into it with your family. Sometimes you might have arguments with your family. But at the end of the day, family loves family. And so we want to be a family that loves each other. We want to be a family that cares about each other. Uh, and so I'm going to take some time and, and have some questions for you guys just to, to get to know one of each other. Uh, but uh, before I do, I said that we're a family. And so um, we have somebody here tonight who is uh, always going to be part of our family. But this is their last Wednesday with us. They're about to move away. And so um, Grace... Uh, you are, I know you're about to be moving to Minnesota, and so uh, one of the things I just wanted us to be able to do uh, as a youth group is just pray for you uh, on your last night. Just pray that um, God would be with you as you go off into new places and, and, new, uh, and do new things and, and meet new people. And so uh, if you're comfortable, would you like to come up here, and we could just pray for you from up here, or if you want to stand... <laughs> It depends on what you want to do. If you're a little uncomfortable, you could just be right there. Yeah, you could stay right there. All right. So all up to you. But but uh, if I could have, um, yeah, Michelle, if you want to, if you want to lead out and pray uh, for grace, uh, you, it, you know how to pray. Come on. Uh, but for the rest of you, we're all a family. And so uh, I would just encourage you, as Michelle is praying, to pray from your seats as well. One of the things that uh, I always like to do if, we're, if we bring somebody up and we're praying for them, you can just, as a sign of, like, I'm praying for them, just reach out your hand uh, right where you're at, just, like, as an extension of, like, I'm praying for, for grace. And so uh, I'm going to hand the mic to Michelle so people on the live stream can hear. But uh, why, don't you, why don't you lead out? All right, can you guys all extend a hand, please? God, we thank you so much for Grace, Lord, and we just thank you for um, who she is, Lord, um, the impact that she's made on um, our family here, Lord, um, and thank you for the impact that she's going to make um, on all of those people that she meets in Minnesota. God, I pray that um, as she starts a new season in her life, God, I pray that she always remembers that she is child of the king lord that she knows who she is through you god that she remembers that she is beautiful lord and that she's wonderfully made god that you made her in your image lord i always pray that she feels your um, love and protection lord as she tries new things and and um, visits new places lord and i just pray for her whole family lord as they go lord that they can be just grounded in you lord in the happy times, Lord, I pray that they are praising you, Lord. And in the sad times or the tough times, Lord, I pray that they cry out to you, Lord. Help uh, this this move to go safely. Lord, protect them. Lord, guide them. We thank you so much that you love us, Lord. Um, and we, we just, we love you back. In your name we pray, amen. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> we just had to, had to put... Uh, Michelle on the spot a little bit, so she did great. But uh, seriously, like, we we want to be a family in this place, and, and we care about each and every single one of you. And so if you've been around here for any amount of time, I hope that you've realized that. Uh, I hope that you, you've hopefully had some people who've, who've begun to get to know your name uh, in this place. Hopefully you have some friends that know your name. Uh, hopefully you've, you've had a chance to meet some of our leaders uh, or pray with some of our leaders, but but we want to be involved in your life. Like if you have sports games, 
Uh, how many of you guys are like in football in the spring? Any, anybody? Like if, you, if you're playing football, like I want to know when your football games are because if it fits in my schedule, I might be able to show up and, and show up at a game or show up at a basketball game or different things like that. Like, uh, you know, if you, if you have tickets to your graduation and you got some extras, send them our way. We'd love to show up. You know, we, we always try and make our, make our way to any, any graduating students. We always want to show up to their grad party and, and just celebrate with them. And uh, we actually we do a service on our Sunday morning uh, in May and June. Uh, for all of our graduating seniors, where we bring them in front of the whole stage uh, and we in front of our whole church, and we just want to choose to honor all of our students. And so um, our church, we love students. Uh, we love you if you're in high school, if you're in middle school. Uh, if you're not in high school or middle school, we don't care about you. I'm just kidding. Uh, we love you too, but uh, but we, we love students. And so, uh, you know, tonight, you know, an example of that is Brittany Cartwright, who is on the other side. She She's the one who provided... Uh, provided Qdoba for all of you guys uh, because she cares. She cares about you guys. And even though she can't be here and serve as a youth leader, she's got t- three kids and a busy schedule and busy life. Um, but she wanted to s- show somehow that she cares about you guys. And so uh, everything we do in, the, in this youth group, we do because we love you and we care about you. And so uh, I just want to share uh, just a couple rules real quick, um, just in this place that we just want to have uh, as part of who we are, uh, as part of our culture. And, and that is, this, is I, I want us to be a youth group that honors one another. I always heard growing up, honor up, honor down, honor all around. So the idea is this, I honor people who are in authority above me. I honor people who are below me. So like, I want, like if you have little brothers and little sisters, be honorable to your little brother and little sister. Like treat them good, you know? Uh, honor your teachers, honor the people in authority over you, but also honor the people around you, treat people around you with respect. And so one of the ways you could do that um, just tonight when we're in this space is um, just being considerate of other people in the room. You know, there's, there's students who come here, they, they come with their Bibles and with notes because they want, uh, they want to hear what God, what God wants to say into their lives. Uh, there's, there's students who are watching online who, uh, who are literally like, listening online because they want to hear, um, they want to hear from God's word. Uh, and so we just want to be respectful to one another. We want to be respectful if people are praying, if people are speaking, even if it's not me speaking, like we want to be honorable to everybody. And so uh, I just want to challenge you with that. But then uh, I'm just going to jump into uh, the message for tonight. It's not a long message. So uh, you, you won't have to hear me for too long, but we'll break up into groups right afterwards. Uh, it will be real simple. Like don't be stressed out about it or anything like that. But uh, I want to read from Psalm 107 tonight. How, how many of you have ever heard of the of Psalms in the Bible? Uh, maybe a bunch of you. Uh, if, maybe you haven't heard of Psalms. Maybe you don't know where that is. It's right in the middle of your Bible. And, and Psalms, really, it's not like a bunch of like random verses. It's really a collection of songs. It, it, it's not Psalms. It's it's songs. These They were originally written uh, to music. And, and so when people would would read them, they'd read them with music in the background, and they'd sing to it, they'd worship to it, um, and, and that was like how they, how they read through the Psalms. And so uh, as I read this, realize this is actually written to music. How many of you guys know that when you listen to music, you, you begin to like memorize the words to what you're listening to? How many of you guys have ever had a song stuck in your head, right? Right? Like I listen to music, and I hear it, and it's constantly on repeat in my brain. And, and I can't seem to get it out of there. And, and so these were written so that you would sing to them. Uh, so the original people who were writing this, they would sing these songs, and that was how they would memorize God's word. That's how they would memorize the things that God would say to them. And, and you ever sing like a love song before? Where you, you have this love song, and, and you start singing it, and every time you sing that love song, you just get like little butterflies in your stomach, or you get like little good feelings, and you, you start thinking about somebody that you like, or whatever. Anytime that song comes on, uh, I remember, uh, man, when I was in high school, this will date me a little bit, but there was a song that I loved when I was in high school, uh, and it was uh, Jordan Sparks and Chris Brown in uh, No Air. And and I I used to sing that in my car at the top of my lungs all the time. And and it's funny because my wife loves that song too. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to sing it. Sorry, Michelle. Going to ruin it. But no, I can't do it. I can't do it. 
No, I'm not that easy. I'm not that easy. I don't care how long you cheer for me. I won't do it. But, uh, yeah. No air. Oh, man. That brings me back. You know, because there's like this, like, the, like, Chris Brown would always do, like, the moonwalk in it. And it was, like, so crazy. Like, he, oh, man. I loved it. But anytime you hear a song, all right, you could shut it off. Gosh. I'm going to throw more eggs at you. But. Uh, but anytime you hear a song, like, it's catchy. It gets in your head. Uh, and so Psalms was written in a way that it, it was supposed to remind you of who God is and remind you of the feelings that God gave you and, and remind you that God loves you, remind you of what God has done for you, what, remind you of what God is providing for you. And, and so all the Psalms were written in that way. But in Psalm 107, uh, it, it really speaks to this idea that God is our redeemer. And you might not know what the word redeemer is. So I'm going to read the psalm first, then I'm going to explain what redeemer means. But Psalm 107, verse 1, here's what it says. It says, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. I don't know if you know this or not. God is good. It says, his faithful love endures forever. God's love never ends. God loves you now, and he loves you forever. And then it goes on. It says, then if, has God redeemed you? If he has, then speak out. Tell others of what God has done in your life. If you're in here and you're a Christian and you know God and you've experienced God in your life, you should share it with other people. Like, don't be quiet about it. Tell other people what God has done in your life. And then it says, tell others that God has redeemed you from your enemies. Some of us have had enemies. Some of us have had rough times in life, and God has provided for us in the middle of it. And it says, God has gathered the exiles from many lands, from the east and the west, from the north and the south. If you don't know what an exile is, an exile is a person who got kicked out of their home. That, that's really what it is. And so the, this verse here, it talks about God gathering together all of these people from all different areas who all have the same problem. They've all been kicked out of their home. And, and so it uses this word. It says this word, redeemed. You know what the word redeem means? We can put that up on, on the screen. The word redeem means to regain, everybody say regain, possession of something in exchange for payment. All right, so here's what that means. To have something redeemed means that you had it, it belonged to you, you lost it, and then somebody bought it back for you. And so the Bible talks about how before the world began, God created us to be in relationship with him. Like you and I were given access to God, access to God's presence, access to a relationship with God, access to God's blessing, access to God's power, access where you could talk to God at any moment with anything going on in your life, and he would listen to you and respond. That is what was yours. That's what belonged to you. But somewhere along the way, we lost it. And it needed to be bought back so that we could have it again. And, and, and all of that was lost. It was lost for one reason. It was lost because we messed up. How many of you guys have ever done something before and you just messed up? You just know I did something wrong. I didn't, I didn't do what I should have done. Some of you guys aren't raising your hand, but you should be raising your hand because we've all done it, right? We've all done things that we're not proud of. We've all done things that we shouldn't have done. And because of that, the Bible says that, that we lose all of that. We lose our, the power of God in our lives. We lose the blessing of God in our lives. We lose the relationship with God that we could have. We lose eternal life with God forever because of this thing called sin. But the Bible says that God is our Redeemer, which means that God bought it back for us. And he did that through Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross, what that really did is it bought back what was rightfully yours from the beginning so that you could have it again. Imagine it like this. Imagine you had a house, and, and somehow you, maybe you didn't make the payments on the house. Maybe you made some poor financial decisions or maybe something tragic happened and the house burned down or whatever, but you lost the house. 
and then somebody came along, and, and you were like, man, I really want my house back. But no matter what, you didn't have enough money to buy the house back. You couldn't buy it. There was nothing you could do to get the house back. But somebody came along, and they said, oh, is that your house? Here, let me buy it. And they bought it, and they said, here's the keys. That's what redemption is. But redemption is only complete when you take the keys. It's like God is saying through his word, here's the keys to your house back. Here's the keys to give you back what was rightfully yours in the first place. All you have to do is reach out and take the keys. And so every week when we talk about God's word and we talk about the things that God offers us and the things that God wants to do in our life, realize that every time we're saying that, we're just holding out the keys. All you have to do is take it. That, that's all. And so that's what redemption is. But in Psalm 107, it talks about this group of people called exiles. They're all the people who lost their home and they needed somebody to bring them back so they could have what was theirs from the beginning. Now, here's the thing. Every single one of us in this room has lost what God provided. We've all lost what God gave us from the beginning. It looks different in all of our lives. But the solution is the same no matter who you are. Every single one of us in this room, I don't care if you're rich or you're poor, if you're black or you're white, I don't care who you are. We all have issues in our life. We are all exiles in this room. And God offers the same thing to all of us. He offers all of us what was originally ours in the first place. And so Psalm 107, what it begins to do is it talks about four different types of exiles. All of us fit into one of those categories in some way or another. And, and so here's what they are. The first one is the wanderer. The first one is the wanderer. And here's what it says. It, it talks about this person who's wandering. In Psalm 107, verse 4, it says, Some wandered in the wilderness. They were lost and they were homeless. They were hungry and they were thirsty. And they nearly died. Here, here's what this is saying. Some of you in the room are wandering. You're wandering through life. And you have no direction. You have no goal in life. You're just kind of going through the motions. Maybe, maybe you're in here tonight and you're just like, I don't know how you ended up here, but you just kind of like wandered in. And, and you don't know where you're going with your life. You don't even have a plan of where you're going. You're just wandering. Just trying to make your way through life. You're just like every day you wake up. And you're just like, I don't know what I'm going to do today. I don't know where I'm going to go today. But I'm just going to, wherever the wind takes me. But here's what the wanderer knows. It says the wanderer is hungry. It says the wanderer is thirsty. And even though you're wandering through life, there are some, you know in your heart of hearts that there is more to life than what you're living for. You just know that there's more. You don't know what it is, but you know that there's more. And some of you, you wake up every single day and you just wander through life, but you're hungry for more. You're hungry for something, but you don't know what it is. And you're lost and you're just like, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know how to handle my life. I'm just lost. And maybe you've been lost so long, you just feel lonely. Like there's nobody here to, to guide me. There's nobody here to help me get to where I need to go. There's nobody who's, who's giving me some direction in my life. And the whole reason you're not at home is because you just don't know where home is. And you're wandering. That's the first person. The second person is the rebel. Some of you are rebels. Here's what a rebel is. Look what it says in verse 10. It says, some sat in darkness and deepest gloom. They were imprisoned in chains of misery. It says they rebelled, they rebelled against the word of God. They scorned the counsel or the wisdom of the Most High, which is God. That is why he was, they were broken. 
with hard labor. They fell, and no one was there to help them. Here's what the rebel is. The rebel is somebody who says, I'm going to live my life my own way. I don't care about God. I don't care what anybody has to say to me. I'm going to do life how I want to do life. I don't need to listen to nobody. I can do this on my own. And the rebel tries to do life on their own. They, they, they avoid God. They don't want anything to do with God. They're like, they might hear about it, but they're like, I'm not doing that. I don't want to do what God says. I, I don't want to live my life the way that God says I should live my life. I want to live my life my way. And it's my way or the highway. And that's how they choose to live their life. But, but maybe you've been rebelling long enough, hopefully, that you've realized that all of your decisions, your own decisions, have brought you not to a place that was good, but to a place that was dark, to a place that was depressing. The rebel, the Bible says the rebel is in chains. They're imprisoned. And they're imprisoned in a prison that they made by their own decisions. Because they said, I don't want, I don't want to be here. I want to do my own thing. It's like if you snuck out of your house at night and you were going and you were doing whatever you wanted and, and whatever you wanted to do was not good, how many of you guys know you might not come home at night because of the things that you were doing at night? I, I had friends of mine who have gotten in car accidents because they were sneaking out of their house, right? And they were, do, they were rebelling against their parents, and as a result, they didn't come home at night, right? That's the reality for the rebel, they put themselves in a prison of their own making. And there's consequences to our decisions. Some of you in the room are rebels. Some of you in the room are fools. Fools and rebels, they're kind of similar, but a little different. See, a rebel wakes up and says, I don't want anything to do with God. I want to go and do life my own way. A fool just does foolish things. How I many of you have ever done something foolish? Let's be honest. We've all done something foolish, right? Like, you knew better, right? You, it wasn't like you were trying to be bad. You just did something, and you're like, oh, no, that was not a good idea. That was a bad idea, right? I had a friend of mine. I, love, I always love this story. I had a friend of mine. He went up onto his two-story house, and he wanted to jump off of his house into the pine tree next door. So he put on all of his football gear, and he covered himself in pillows, and he jumped out of his two-story house into the tree next door because he's, he's an idiot, right? He's a fool. And, and he just bounced like a rag doll out of the tree, all right? Some of you, your life is like that. You just are like, oh, this will be a good idea. And then you jump, and you realize that was a horrible idea. But how many of you know, sometimes you make foolish decisions, and sometimes those foolish decisions have big consequences, right? Sometimes you do something, and it wasn't like you woke up trying to be a bad person, but you did something stupid, and there were all kinds of consequences as a result. Here's what it says about the fool. It says, some, fool, some were fools, and they rebelled. They suffered for their sins. They couldn't stand the thought of food, and they were knocking on death's door. And, and, and what I wrote down about the fool, they made foolish decisions, and as a result, their life was beginning to break, and it was in need of some healing. It, they, they had some, some things that they brought, some pain that came upon their life on their own doing. And, and they were beginning to die because of their mistakes. Because they were doing some foolish stuff, and they kept on doing some foolish things. The last person is this. It's a sailor in the storm. A sailor in the storm. And this person is without a home for a different reason. And maybe some of you in the room are sailors, and you've, you've experienced some storms. Here's what it says in Psalm 107, verse 23 says, some went off to sea in ships. They were plying the trade routes of the world. They too observed God's power in action 
his impressive works on the deepest seas. He spoke and the winds rose, stirring up the waves, but their ships were tossed up to the heavens and plunged down to the depths. The sailors cringed in terror. They reeled and staggered around their ships like drunkards, and they were at their wits' end. I remember at one time I went to Maine uh, uh, with my wife. We took a vacation. We, we drove there through Canada. We arrived in Maine. And one of the things I've always wanted to do is I wanted to go whale watching. I was like, how cool would it be to see a whale, right? Like, that would be awesome. So I went on this whale watching tour. And I get on the boat, and they're like, we've got some swells today, some, some 20-foot swells. I was like, oh, that doesn't sound that bad. We're on a big boat. But really what that means is when you're on the front of the boat, you go up 20 feet, and then you go down 40 feet and then back up 40 feet. I didn't realize, like, when they say 20-foot swells, it actually means you're going up and down double. And I went to, ho to hopefully see a whale, and all I saw was the back of the boat and projectile vomit coming out of my mouth. I got so sick. Like, it was not fun. I didn't see a single whale, and they didn't give me my money back. I was so mad. <laughs> I was so mad. But just that one moment, with the waves like that made me say, man, I would never, ever, ever want to be on a boat in the middle of a storm. But here's the thing. Some of you, when it comes to life, you're like a sailor in a storm. And you've been going through life, and life has been good, but somewhere along your life, something happened. Maybe it was something you did. Maybe it was something somebody else did to you. Maybe it was just something that happened in life. Maybe you lost a loved one or somebody that you care about. And because of it, life is rough. And it's been rough long enough that you don't know where home is anymore. And you feel like you're lost at sea. And you're crying out for help. I just need some sort of help. I'm stuck here. All of us in this room are one of these four. Some of you are wandering through life. Some of you are rebelling through life. Some of you are just making foolish decisions through life. And some of you are going through a storm, and it's tough. But here's what I love in this psalm. At the end of all of these verses, where I stop, there's another verse. And the verse is the same at the end of all of these verses that I read. So the solution, whether you're a wanderer or a rebel or a fool or stuck in a storm, is exactly the same no matter who you are. And here's what, what it says. Psalm 107, verse 6, also verse 13, verse 19, verse 28, says the very same thing. It says, Lord, help, they cried in their trouble. And he rescued them from their distress. For the wanderer, when they cried out for help, they're lost, they don't have any direction. God showed up. For the rebel who was stuck in a prison of their own making, when they cried out to God, God showed up. For the fool who just made some foolish decisions and their life was getting destroyed by it, when they cried out to God, God showed up. And for the person in the storm, who didn't know where shore was, didn't know how to get back home. Life was rough and throwing them all over the place. When they cried out to God, God showed up for all of them. So here's the key. Wherever you're at, whether you're a wanderer, a rebel, a fool, or stuck in a storm, the action step is the same. It's cry out to God for help. No matter who you are in the room, we all need help. Every single one of us, we need God's help. And if I try to find help any other way, right, if, if I think that help's going to come through people, here's the reality. People will fail you. If I think help is going to come through some organization, here's the thing. Organizations will fail you. If I think help is going to come through money, money can go away. But the only one that brings me help Real help is God. And if I want God's help, all I need to do is ask. Because he's got the keys, and he's just holding it out for me. 
All I got to do is take it. That's all I got to do. Here's the thing. If you read after this, you see what God provides for these people. I don't have these verses on the screen, but if you read about the wanderer, you find that God gave them direction, and he brought them to their home. He brought them to a place where they could live, and they could grow, and they could thrive in life. For the rebel, the Bible says that God came and he broke their chains. He broke them and gave them freedom so that they could be free from the shackles that they put themselves in. For the fool, it says that God brought healing through his word. That, because here's the reason why we're foolish. We're foolish because we don't know God's wisdom. And so God brings healing to the fool by showing them his word because God's word is wisdom. If you want to know how to live a wise life and a good life, go to God's word. If you don't want to be foolish anymore, start reading this book. For the, the one in the storm, the Bible says that God showed up and calmed the storm and brought them safely to shore. All they had to do was cry out to God for help. And then here's the second part, is they needed to take possession of what God provided. Here's the thing, I don't have, if, if somebody knows who God is, if I've told somebody about God, if I've if I shared my heart out, I've poured my heart out about who God is, and I share God's word with people. I don't have any hard feelings for somebody who then goes off and doesn't listen to it. And I've watched it too many times. I've been doing this long enough. I've watched students that I have literally moved as much as I could to just be in their life. I've had students call me when they got kicked out of their house. I've had students that, that came to me with drug addiction. I've had students that literally stood on a bridge ready to jump. I've been in those meetings, I've sat with those students, and I've shared with them time and time again God's word. And I have watched too many students not take it. I've watched too many students where I literally said, here's the keys. Here's the keys that God is giving you. All you got to do is grab it. And I don't feel bad. I, I, don't, I don't lose sleep over it anymore. I used to. But now I'm like, no, I, I handed you the keys. I gave you the opportunity. And all we want to do every single Wednesday night, we just want to hand you the keys, and it's your responsibility to take it. It's your responsibility to take it, to take possession of what God has provided. And we will constantly, no matter who you are, if you fail this week, if you don't take it this week, we'll be here again next week. And if you miss it that week, we'll be here again next week. And every single week, we're going to just offer you keys. We're going to hand you the keys time and time again. All you have to do is take them. But I believe that God wants to be in your life, and all you need to do is cry out to him. Say, God, I need you right now. I need you in my life. And then just grab hold of what he offers. And he offers it right through here, right through his word, time and time again. If you don't understand it, if you read it and you're like, I don't know what that's saying, come and talk to us. Come and talk to us at any time. Message us. Because we would love to just help you understand God's word better. But we all are in a place where we need God's help. So in just a moment, we're going to split up into groups. We're going to split up into guys in one group, girls in another group. We're going to ask you two questions. Here's the first question. First question is this. Which of these exiles are you? Do you feel like you're a wanderer or a rebel, a fool, or someone stuck in a storm? doesn't matter who you are. We love you either way. If you say, man, I'm a rebel, we're glad you're here. Welcome to the club. We've all done it, right? If you're a fool, welcome to the club. We're all fools. We've done it. If you're wandering through life, you just don't feel like you have direction, welcome to the club. If you're going through a storm in life, I guarantee you there's other people in this room who have gone through storms too. But we want to just be here for each other. We want to just share and be open with this. And then lastly, we're just going to say, how can we pray for you? And maybe, there, maybe you don't have anything right now. Maybe you can't think of anything. That's okay. You don't have to talk in these groups at all. If you want to just sit there and listen to other people, that's, that's cool. You can do that. But if you have something that you want people to pray for, 
I, I just encourage you to share it in those groups. And so uh, I want to pray for you. And then Ryan, is go- Ryan and Ted are going to be over here with the guys. And Michelle and Jenna are going to be over here with the girls. And Emma, too. I didn't see you in the back. Sorry. I, didn't, I wasn't ignoring you, Emma. I saw you. But uh, they're going to be with the girls. And so uh, be respectful to one another. All right, listen to one another. Don't try and distract from somebody else sharing where they're coming from in life or, or what they're dealing with in life. We just want to be open. But I just want to pray for you, and then we'll split into those groups. And we'll literally take, like, uh, just, like, probably five, maybe ten minutes or so. Um, so it won't even be long. But just some time to give some people some time to share. If you don't want to share, you don't have to share. So let me pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for every single student in this room. God, I thank you that while we were exiles, God, while we were out of our home, out of where we belonged, God, I thank you that you are willing to show up. God, that you're willing to show up to the wanderer and give direction and help them find a place where they can get planted and where they can grow. God, I thank you that you show up in the prison cell with the rebel to say, hey, I know you did what you did, but I want to come to set you free so that you can live in freedom and not in chains. God, I thank you that you show up to the fool and say, here's healing, take it. And God, I thank you that you show up in the middle of whatever storm we're facing in life. God, that you want to bring calm to our storm and you want to bring us through the storm to the other side so that we can be with you. God, I thank you that you love us. God, I thank you that you desire a relationship with all of us. God, you are such a big God and yet you love little me. God, and you love little them. God, you are so big, yet you love us each. God, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. So guys over here and ladies over here, be respectful, and we'll just take some time just ask these questions. So.